Okay, so Abdul type the start, so I'm gonna start. So today is the chapter 10, is the regression with the panel data. So I think you guys already familiar with what panel data is, right? Because the panel data is actually what is called the time series or longitudinal data set. So that means maybe when we collect uh, some of the observations, there is also another another dimension called the time, right? So some of the objects or subjects actually measured more than twice in that case, and then recording it those kind of uh, uh, observations into the data. That's what is called the panel data. So, so it's about the about the with the time with the time dimensions is uh, is included in the data set. So. In this chapter, actually, deal with a lot of example about the regression with the panel data, like a time, how to analyze the time series data set. So, actually, most of the, this chapter actually have a lot of example showing the lot of actual example, which is nice for us. And then it, the the concept itself is just kind of a simply expand. I would say the expansion, extension of the linear regression model. Because uh, the only thing, the difference is that what we use, the data set used for the model going to be the time time frame. So timely, timely repeated recording the data, recorded the data set. So these are the kind of uh, data set. So in here, we're going to using the these three, especially uh, PLM, which is the panel linear, linear model, which is the, that's the acronym. So PLM package is going to be uh, used for the this analysis. And then our question in here is the two things. So if there is actually effects of the some, some our key independent variable on the outcome variable. And then if, if so, how strong it is? That's the, that's the main question. So actually in here, we have uh, two questions. So that means the effects exist. And the second one is if so, uh, how, how strong over time? Yeah, and also over time, right? So these are our main question, okay? All right, so. Let's move on to the next one. So, okay, so panel data. So panel data actually has uh, this kind of data set. So in contrast of the screen, uh, cross-section data, cross-section data is actually just one single, single appointment time, right? But the thing is the panel data actually means that we have a uh, more than two time, time period record. So we have uh, two things like a T, and then I, I is the uh, object observation. And then T is the time, right? So that's the kind of thing. So there is another dimension it, uh, is added to our data set. And then, and then this chapter is how we can analyze it again. So in, at, at the bottom is a kind of like a, how we can, um, how we can try to try to identify our data set. So every time we actually conducting the model, the first thing we have to do is the kind of uh, describing the data set and then uh, explore the data set. So what's the data structure is about. So in this case, in our example, we actually using the, what is called the fatality data set. So maybe I think that, um, Maybe as an urban planners, there is actually, there's, uh, we actually have a familiar with this kind of a data set, but maybe those who are not have a, a urban planning background, fertility data set actually in the US, there is a, uh, there is a data set called the FARS, uh, FARS database. I've worked with that data a lot. Huh? I've worked with the FARS data. 
Yeah, because the uh, first data set is the fatality, I think, analysis recording system, recording system database. So first data set actually includes uh, detailed information about the all, all, all car or crash fatality, fatality record, I think. This one is actually has been established since uh, since late late 1970s until until present. So it is actually annual the annual database. Okay. So first data set is the fatality. I, I, I let me write down fatality. I think uh, uh, analysis. I think it's fatal accident reporting system. That's like the. Uh, oh, no, uh, you're right. It is fatality analysis reporting system. I was way yeah. off. My yeah, yeah. Yeah, because uh, it's a fatality. Yeah, it's a fatality analysis recording system. It is actually collected by the WHA. Which is the federal, I think of H H eight uh F W A F H W A F H W A I would say, federal highway association I guess. So, collecting by this organization, this institute, is a first data set. So these are the actually part of the that data set come from. I think that this one is a more like an aggregate data set because. Uh, Maybe I, I hope that I can, okay, hold on. Uh, let me, can you guys see the empty screenshot? Like a- Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the search result. Okay, so, when you click uh, this one, oh, it's not the uh, not the FHW, it's a NHTSA data set. So anyway, it's not that important. So this is the first data set. Yeah, not the recording, reporting system. Sorry about that also. Fatality analysis reporting system data set, and then uh, it is uh, actually down, you can download in the, this data set since 1975 through the 2021 right now so it is keep collecting and recording and then it is actually individual individual crash level data set and then you can feel free to aggregating that data set based on by using the those tables because the uh, first data set actually consists of the consists of the tens of the tables so when you downloading the that first data set you can download in the zip file and then when you unzip it there is a uh, several database, uh, several tables that you can join together into the one big table, and then this fatality data set is a part of the that outcome. So aggregate the aggregate the fatality fatality data. Okay. So anyway, so these are the kind of a structure. So like a state. So there is actually forty eight state. Uh, crash uh, fatality data set and year is the seven period, seven time period, which is the factor is a seven. So that means the uh, 1980, uh, 1982 to 1988 record. Okay. And then the other part is the just kind of a relevant control variable. Okay. So that's the how it, how it looked like. Keep going down is quite long. And then they also do the some kind of a summary things. And then in this example, actually mentioning about the how I call taxes gonna be uh, affected to the traffic that. So our basic hypothesis gonna be the maybe if the state government increased the alcohol taxes, maybe traffic death gonna be decreased, why? So that means between the, those two relationship should be the negative relationship, right? Cause uh, state government gonna be uh, collecting the more alcohol taxes from the alcohol consumption 
that means there is a there is a uh, less demand for the purchasing the alcohol, and that, that actually leads to the lower risk of the traffic death in the car accident. So there is a few people gonna be drink drink alcohol while they wanted to drive if they if they collected the higher higher alcohol taxes. So that means our common sense tells us that the our basic hypothesis is gonna be there is a negative relationship between the, those two variables, right? So, but in here, actually, for the just kind of showing the purposes, it actually do the do the uh, linear regression for the separately by subsetting subsetting the fatality data set by the 1982 and 1988 separately, okay? And then when we do these things, when you go scroll down, you can find that there is uh, actually positive relationships, right, in here, which is not we not we expected from uh, from the from the initial hypothesis, right? Because as you can see here, as a plot uh, as a plot, you just find it finding that that. Finding that the older, older separate separate linear regression by the year shows that uh, there is a kind of a positive, like a slope is the positive. So positive relationship. So that means higher taxes gonna be the higher fertility rate, which doesn't make sense to us, right? So that's the kind of like a uh, kind of like a, a little bit issue because the reason why this one actually happened is there is what is called the omit variable existed in the model. So due to the this kind of omit variable actually uh, distort the, this kind of a relationship to the outcome, right? So that's the kind of reason. So Actually, in here, what is the omitted variable is that we did not consider the any kind of a time dimensions, which means any kind of, we did not consider any kind of a changing in taxes. We only only cares about the amount of the taxes. We did we actually cares about the what's the changing in taxes gonna be affected to the uh, decrease in the uh, traffic debt but we did not include that kind of things into the model. So which is the omitted variable, omitted bias this problem into our model. And also uh, Abdul just to talk about the balanced and then unbalanced kind of things. And also zero conditional mean is assumption is violated in this case. I don't think so, cause uh, it's a kind of, it is actually kind of a, uh, by using the, these two separate data set then uh, actually separate regression by itself has a general condition of mean gonna be satisfied because uh, we actually draw the line, which is the le uh, least linear, least, uh, least square, uh, ordinary square mean, right? That means our error term gonna be the zero in this case. Only just, look, only just looking at the, these graphs and then a plot. The problem is that we actually have omitted variable, okay? And also, when we when we go up here, we also say that uh, uh, there is a there is actually concept about the balanced and unbalanced. I forgot to mention this because when we looking when we when we looking at the looking at our data set. Every year has the uh, all complete the data set, which means our data set is the highly balanced. So that means we actually have uh, all of the observed the variable observed the record or over the all time period. So that means it is a completely completely repeatedly measured. I would say uh, completely. Repeatedly measured observations. Okay, in that case, this one is the balanced the data set, and then uh, there is actually missing data set at least one entity for the at least one time period. That's actually 
our data set is an unbalanced data set, okay? So that's the, what this one is about. So, so that means we just are saying that, the, okay, just the conducting the regression separately by the year does not give us any kind of a good or uh, make sense, makes a uh, sensible kind of a uh, result, okay? So now how we can do that? So we have to try to do the, like what is called the before and after comparison, which is the, when we have a panel data with a two time period, this one is actually what I actually actually done for the, my, my previous journal publications before and after effect of the, after effect of the transit system. So, but anyway, so when we have only two time period, we can actually testing about the before and after effect of the comparison, right? So in here, assuming that we have only two time period, like, uh, uh, 1982 and 1988. In that case, we can say about uh, these kind of uh, equations, but the thing is, we just uh, try to regressing the difference to the fatality rate uh, based on the changing into the uh, alcohol taxes over time, and also with the air term differences, like uh, these equations, okay? And then when we do this in R, we can have a result like this. So as you can see here, now we have a kind of a negative relationship, which is what we expected, which means uh, changing, changing into the beer taxes actually negative relationship with the fatality changes in the fatality rate, which means when the beer taxes uh, uh, increases, fatality rates, uh, rate gonna be decay, uh, decreases over time. That's the, what this one is about, okay? It's a uh, interpretation is uh, quite simple. So what we actually do here is uh, we actually calculating the changing into the fatality rate and then uh, alcohol taxes. And then uh, we, when we regressing the dead one by you, uh, that uh, regression model by using the dead changing, like the differences, we now have uh, what we expected from the analysis, uh, hypothesis, which is the negative relationship between the changing in the beer taxes and then a uh, changing in the fatality rate. So beer taxes going up, fatality rate going down. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. And then the next one is the, what is called the fixed effect regressions, which means the previous chapter, previous, previous sections, we only cares about the, uh, in our key independent variable and then a dependent variable, like a changing into the fatality rate and then a changing into the beer taxes. But we also thinking about uh, how those level of the differences can be changing depending on the, what is called the fixed variable over time. What is called the fixed variable means it is actually variable does not change over time, okay? So when we say about the fixed effect variable, it is actually like a, what is called the constant over time, okay? So variable whose value is constant over time. One is the typical example in this case, in this example is, uh, is uh, what is called the state. Because uh, state does not changing, right? State is a fixed variable. So that means our question gonna be expanded okay, by using the dead expect, uh, fixed effect variable. So the previous section, we actually asked a question about uh, if the, there is the relationship between the, uh, between the uh, fatality, changing in the fatality rate and changing into the beer taxes. And then uh, if so, how strong they are. But now our question is expensive, ex extended like, uh, okay, 
how how those effects are gonna be variable or uh, very uh various or vary according to the states. That's the our question now. Okay. So after also a question about the difference in difference method, right? Yeah, difference in difference is just kind of simply measure about the if, the, if uh, there is any kind of a differences between them. But in this case, regression actually measures about the how strong they are, and then uh, how those strong effect, how those effects are the significant or not. So regression actually using the panel data regression actually have answers the additional question additionally such question about the how strong and then how significant difference in difference is just only tells about the there is a difference there is a significant differences between the those changes or not okay sometimes those are the very useful for the exploratory purposes and then also very straightforward method but when we really care about the how 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 strong or what's the magnitude of the, those kind of uh, effect that in that case we use the regression model because the regression model definitely estimate the regression coefficients right so so now we actually have a uh, uh, let's looking at the example so so in he in this case in our case now we have another fixed effect variable called the state because uh, where where the state uh, where the crashes happen over time does not change uh, does not change over time right state doesn't change that's the fixed variable so that means we have to do we have to do the same thing in the model like a like a fertility rate and then and then changing into the state taxes so in this case we actually using the instead of the lm functions we use the what is called the ltlm function like a panel linear i think model this is what the acronym of the model so this is the function name come from so plm we just uh, in this case, what is the good about the PLM is we can actually set up the our our what is called uh, our indexes indexes like a like a estimator mode uh, estimator model, right? So that means we do not have to calculate about the about the changing into the into the late uh, changing into fertility rate and then the real taxes. Before uh, in the previous sections, we actually were, we were able to the calculate the those differences. Excuse me, because there is only two time period. But the thing is, our data set actually has a uh, uh, state is the fixed variable, not the unobserved. Because uh, you know the when we aggregate. When we aggregate the crash count, like a fatality count, we actually think about the what what geographic level we have to aggregate for the crash fatality, right? Our state is the our our unit of analysis that used for the aggregation of the aggregation of the crash fatality. So that means state should be the fixed variable. So Location does not change at all over time. You know, that uh, does that make sense at all? Because uh yeah, so, so, so maybe yeah. maybe if I if maybe I don't get it right, because I, I was thinking that um uh, what what we are avoiding is uh let's say to for our results to be influenced by some state uh specific characteristics, let's say like culture or attitude and, and things like this, which are in a sense different across state. And we cannot observe them. So I'm thinking that if we don't control for this, mm. that one is actually another okay. problem because uh, that one is actually not the regression problem. Okay, that means 
your question is uh, okay now your question is uh, what characteristic within the state going to be affected to the variation is the crash fatality over time yeah that we can't observe you know because with the problem we have is omitted variable right that is actually in uh, that is actually a question of uh, what is called the multi level regression model that is not the simple regression model question that is not the unobserved okay in this case under the, this context because uh, in this context one when we use the linear regression with the panel data in this context is uh, more about the like uh, based on the our time series data set how state is going to be affected to the, the variation of the crash fatality because uh, what i wanted to say is uh, you are not right about the, this one because you are actually your your thought is the, a little bit different that not, not suitable for the this research context in this example your question is the more like a more like a complicated regression model called a multi-level regression it is not the kind of unobserved kind of vector there might be the unobserved factors right when we try to using the multi-level modeling but under the, this context we just saying about the state is a kind of like a, we just uh, that unobserved vector is just kind of aggregate as a state as a dummy or categorical variable okay yeah it is uh, depending on the how you can you can collect the data set if you can collect the more detailed characteristic of the data state level characteristics then your regression going to be develop much further trans much further into the multi-level modeling but in this case on con uh, under the this research context if we ha only have a state level data set that means we just only using the this kind of approaches and then uh, that kind of uh, unobserved vector gonna be gonna be uh, representing as a kind of a categorical factor of the state okay that means we all assuming that uh, by categorization of the state can be reflected all of the, these unobserved characteristic underneath uh, embedded into the that categorization in this case. I'm not saying that you are you are not uh, not right, but under the this context, the uh, we we only using the state level category 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 based uh, categorical variable, which based on the assumption that all of the unobserved factor is the reflected into the that categorical variable. Maybe if we have an additional variable related to the state characteristic, maybe we can think about the multi-level modeling to reflect the, that kind of a characteristic variations into the changing into the crash fatality over time. So in this case, so in our mode, in our fatality data set actually have a seven, uh, seven time period data. So that means like uh, 1982, 83, 84, etc., and 88, we cannot keep calculating the each changing to the over time. It is a very uncomfortable to do that. So PLM actually allows us to do these things automatically by setting up the state and state as a fixed variable and then a year as a time variable. And then model is the we actually cares about the within within group changes. So that's the how we can formulating the uh, model, and then we can finding that uh, our final model is the uh, this one. Like uh, depending on the state, our beer tax is gonna be adjusted depending on the this kind of a state level variable. It is still significant, and then it is still negative relationships. But the thing is that regression coefficient is the kind of like a, a little bit adjusted compared to the previous one. Okay. Any more questions? Anything? Okay. So let's move on to the uh, 10.4. So 
10.4 is the when we have a regression with the time fixed effect, which means the time is the fixed constant. Okay. And then, so, so if there is only time fixed effect, so time fixed effect regression model gonna be become like this. And then we can say about the, this kind of a relationship, like a B of taxes, state effect and a time fixed effect right in here and then our uh our model gonna be look like this which is a little bit a lot of uh, a lot of coefficients in it this is because of the this is a just kind of a simple linear regressions what we call because we only use the one year Right, it is just kind of simply cross-sectional, and then we all we all have a state level kind of a result, and then also we can also have a kind of a each cross-sectional data set, and then uh, there is a one reference group which is the 1982 as a reference group. So every every time variable is the fixed. In this case. Okay, and then and then in here is the effect is the two ways, which is the our our there is a kind of a two two different fixed effect variable gonna be considered in this case. So and then when we go down here, we can also found that uh, there is a negative relationships, but the thing is it is not that significant. If we have only Consider about the fixed effect. So these are the kind of things. Actually, I'm kind of a little bit confusing about the why we have to do these kind of approaches. What's the application of the this? Because uh, we usually do not actually uh, set up the categorization, uh, set up the time. Uh, time variable as a categorical or factor variable for our linear regression purposes. Because once we can do that, our time dimension gonna be disappear. And then uh, our modeling uh, is uh, kind of like a, a little bit more complicated. Maybe if we can looking at the, these kind of uh, coefficients compared to the 1982, maybe we can thinking about the these kind of a negative relationship always shows that uh, uh, since the 1982, alcohol taxes is uh, keep increasing and then uh, that increase is gonna be affected, negatively affected to the beer uh, uh, crash fatalities over time. That, and then uh, how strong those are compared to the 1982 for the each year, that might be the interesting question to use the, these kind of approaches, but still I cannot understand why we have to use these kind of data set, data approaches. But anyway, so this is actually what this one is about. So, so deep research question, again, it's a slightly different, but the thing is if we can use the time as a fixed effect and then uh, there is actually have a kind of a interesting result gonna be show up. And then a 10.5 is uh, another another fixed effect regressions. And then there is actually says about the, some kind of a general assumption for this. So error term is the considered mean zero, which is the over time, all of the, these kind of error term gonna be, should be the zero. And then it's also, a, I, uh, identically independent distribution draw from the joint distribution because we have a we have a time dimension and then each time we have a different kind of a frequency distribution but those are the all of the iid kind of a, uh, uh distribution which means these kind of distribution actually come from the same populations okay 
And then the third one is the large outlier is unlikely. So there is a no kind of a outlier going to be happen and no perfect multi-coinality, which is the pretty same from the linear regression approaches, except for the this condition of mean zero and then uh, this time kind of a dimensions, okay? And then let's move down here. And then, uh, and then uh, move down here is the kind of a simply testing about the standard error and then the p values, like a, like a testing about the is the beta zero, beta one, like a beer taxes regression coefficient is uh, different from zero or not. In this case, we can find that uh, our p value is uh, slightly more than 0 0.05, which means the uh, there is a slightly uh, uh, no significant relationship between the changing in the beer taxes and changing in the fertility rate over time in our data set. And then next one is the drinking driving low and then the traffic death. Actually, this one is what is called uh, in this chapter, actually we, use the same data set but the thing is uh, this data this chapter is actually we actually try to do the what is called a full regression model of purchase so that means we use the, a lot of uh, other uh, fixed effect or control variable related to the drink uh, fertility rate okay these are like uh, unemployment rate and uh, in, um, income miles or drinkies and drink age, uh, drink age and drink age, mm, categorical and punish dummy variable. Mm, it's a dummy variable, like a punishment policy for the dummy variable. By using the all of the, these things as a kind of a, what is called a fixed effect. Fixed effect variable, we can actually develop the model uh, uh, hold on. model as a, as a follows. And here actually, uh, it set up the kind of a, kind of a fatality for the 1982 and 1988 to use the, to use the linear regression model, which I don't understand either, but, but just kind of a studying purposes, it actually used for this one, but anyway, so, so this seven model gonna be uh, gonna be show up, and then we can actually do that, like uh, by increasing the by increasing the adding the more variable up here, right? Like uh, model seven is the kind of what is called a full model, right? And then our Final result using the stargazer is as follows, right? So we can say that uh, in here, we can find that except for the model four, all beer taxes is a very significant relationship, model four and six, significant relationship uh, to the fatalities. And also when we're looking at the drink ages, drink ages does not relate it to the fatality, which is the quite quite interesting to see because uh, except for the model five in here and then also this one is uh, does not significant at all which is uh, uh what i not what i expected because younger age is actually kind of like a more like a likely to be the vulnerable to the drink a lot so that means i think that there is a lot of a uh, uh, young age contributions to the fatality crashes, but it is not true. It is not that significant. And also punishment does not affect at all. So that means like a penalty or a fatality penalty or a prevention program does not affect anything, which is a very disappointing result. Mm -hmm. So that means the government level it for, uh, efforts about the preventing the fatality rate uh, decreasing the fatality rate does not uh, significant at all during this time period. And then uh, miles is uh, quite in, quite significant, but the thing is the uh, magnitude is uh, very small. 
And then uh, what is the interesting is uh, about the unemployment is a very, very significant, which is the very interesting result. But that is actually makes sense because the unemployment, uh, state with a higher unemployment uh, rate is what is called the lost belt states, lost belt city area, like, uh, like uh, north side of the cities like Ohio or those kind of area like uh, Detroit. So those area like a uh, state with a higher, higher employment rate tends to be have a lack of the infrastructure of the traffic or transportation system, which actually have a lot of uh, higher risk of the, these kind of a crisis. And also income seems to be very significant relationships. So higher income, means a higher fatality rate, which is also very interesting because that means higher income people tends to be, uh, income state tends to be spend a, a lot of more money affordable to the purchasing the more alcohol that actually vulnerable to the, uh, to the fatality rate and also high income state can be affordable. Well, uh, residents in the higher income state tends to, are more likely to pay those beer, uh, alcohol taxes, even, even if that taxes is increases. So that actually means that the higher still, uh, the alcohol consumption is still stable, that actually increases the fatality rate. So that's the thing. And then, when we go down to the R square, like a goodness of fit, we can find that uh, when we looking at the adjusted R square, which is here and here, is uh, quite interesting. And then uh, I kind of very interesting to see that there is a negative value in it, in this model. That means this, this, these three models does not make sense at all, actually. Okay. So that means that there is a actually obviously kind of a, some kind of a, uh, 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 uh result is the biases or some, um, some omitted variable variable or some distorted result. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing. Yeah. And then. And then F statistics is all of the significance, so which is uh, nice. So in under the, these kind of cases, our model like uh, adjusting when we looking at the adjusted R square, maybe fourth model or maybe sixth model, model six gonna be the very good, showing the good uh, goodness of fit, especially for the model six is uh, quite good for us, which is the uh, one we have to be analyzed. So that's the kind of things. And then this kind of a final result is about, okay. And then the rest of the part is all of the, these kind of things is just kind of testing the goodness of fit of the regression model across the, our model up the, in the table. So this is the end of the end of the chapter 10. So do you have any questions or anything?